This is part 139 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing a search web page using ASP.NET and Stored Procedure. This is continuation to part 138. So please watch part 138 before proceeding. So here is what we want to do. We want to implement an employee search form as you can see here. It has got four search fields, first name, last name, gender and salary. Using this search form, we want to search this employee's table and then display the matching rows as you can see here. Now to be able to search the employee's table, we are going to make use of this stored procedure. We have implemented this search stored procedure in our previous video. So let's see how to call the search stored procedure from ASP.NET Web Application project. So let's flip to Visual Studio now and let's create a new project. So let's click on File New Project. We want to create an ASP.NET web application. So under installed, under templates, under Visual C Sharp, select web and in the right hand pane, select ASP.NET web application. Let's give our project a name. Let's call it dynamic SQL demo and let's click OK. And in here, select empty and then web forms, click OK. The project is now successfully created. The first thing that I'm going to do is add a connection string in web.config file. So under configuration section, let's include a section for connection strings. Here we have added a connection string with the name connection str. This connects to SQL Server on my local machine. So I have set server to dot and the database is set to employee DB which contains the employees table from which we want to retrieve data. And finally, we want to use Windows authentication to connect to SQL Server. So we have set integrated security equals true. The next thing that we want to do is add a web form to our project. So within Solution Explorer, right click on the project name, add, and we want to add a web form. Let's name our web form search page without dynamic SQL. Let's click OK. We're going to make use of Bootstrap to style our employee search form. So let's include a reference to Bootstrap and link. So within the head section, let's include link element. Let's set the rel attribute to style sheet and type attribute to text slash CSS and the href attribute to the CDN link. To get the Bootstrap CDN link, visit this website and right here we have the CDN link. So let's copy that and specify it right here. Now we want to design this employee search page like this using Bootstrap CSS classes. If you're new to Bootstrap, please check our Bootstrap tutorial for beginners playlist. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go into the details of designing this employee search form. I'm going to replace this body section with the HTML that I have copied to clipboard. So what we have here is essentially some bootstrap classes and components. In addition to that, we've got four label controls to display these labels on the left and then corresponding text boxes. And then we have got a search button and a grid view control to display the search results. I'll have all this HTML available on my blog in case you need it. Now let's flip this web form to the design mode and let's double click on the button control to generate the click event handler. We're going to write some ADO.NET code. So let's bring in a few ADO.NET namespaces. We need system.configuration, system.data and finally system.data.sql client. Now the first thing that we're going to do when we click the search button is read the connection string from web.config file. We're going to store our connection string in this variable connection str equals to read the connection string from web.config file. We're going to make use of the configuration manager class. So configuration manager dot connection strings of the name of the connection string within our web.config is connection str. So let's specify that right here. So we want to read that connection string value. Now, using the connection string that we have read from our web.config file, we want to create a SQL connection object. Let's call the instance SQL connection and let's pass our connection string to the constructor of our SQL connection class. 
Next, let's create SQL command object. Let's call the instance cmd equals new SQL command. And we want this command object to use this connection that we have already created. So let's set the connection property of the command object to the connection object that we have already created. Now, the command text for the command object is going to be the name of our stored procedure. The name of our stored procedure is SP search employees. So let's specify that as the value for command text property. Now we know this is a stored procedure. We have to tell that to the command object. And the way we do that is by setting command type property of the command object. Let's set that to stored procedure. And if you look at this stored procedure, it has got four parameters. So we need to specify those parameters and the values for them and then add those parameters to the command object. Now first, let's check if the user has typed something into the first name text box. Now the ID of the first name text box is input first name. So let's use the ID of the text box here. So if input first name dot value, and I'm also going to use the trim method to remove white spaces on either sides. And then let's compare that to an empty string. Now, if the value within the input first uh, name text box is not equal to an empty string, that means the user has typed something into that text box. So in that case, let's go ahead and create a SQL parameter object. Let's call it param equals new SQL parameter. And the name of the parameter is at first name. So let's specify the name of the parameter here. And then we need to specify the value for the parameter. Where is the value going to come from? It's going to come from the respective text box. The ID of the text box for first name is input first name. So let's retrieve the value out of the text box. And then we need to add this parameter to the parameters collection of the command object. So to do that, let's use command.parameters.add. We're going to add the parameter object that we have created. And we have to do the same thing for last name, gender, and salary. In the interest of time, I've already typed the required code. So let's copy that and specify it right here. So similarly, we have created parameters for last name, gender, salary. And now, let's open the connection and execute the command by calling execute reader. And whatever result we get, we're going to store that in SQL data reader. Let's call the instance RDR. And we're going to set this data reader as the data source for our grid view control. And if you look at the ID of the grid view control, it is GV search results. So GV search results dot data source equals RDR. And let's call the data bind method. So with all these changes, let's run our application by pressing Control F5. Now let's search for male employees. So within the gender text box, let's type mail, click the search button. Notice we are getting an error. Procedure or function SP search employees expects a parameter at first name which was not supplied. And if you look at the code that we have just written, notice we are creating this at first name parameter and adding it to the parameters collection of the command object. So why are we getting this error? We are getting this error because first name text box on the search page is empty string. We haven't set it to anything. So what happens is it doesn't come inside this if block. So it's not adding the at first name parameter to the parameters collection of the command object. And since we also haven't specified any default values for these parameters, it expects the parameter to be passed. So let's go ahead and specify null as the default value for these parameters. So we don't get this error when we don't specify any values for the parameters on the search page. So let's set null as the default value 
for all the parameters. Let's alter the stored procedure. And now let's go back and let's search for male employees. Now look at that. We get all male employees. Similarly, if we search for female employees, we only get female employees. So here, we're using a stored procedure to do that. In our next video, we'll discuss rewriting the same example using Dynamic SQL and understand the difference between using a stored procedure and Dynamic SQL. Here is the stored procedure and here is the ADO.NET code to call that stored procedure SP Search Employees. Thank you for listening and have a great day.